Chapter 2, A Tale of Two Kings by Gene Edwards A figure in the distance was running toward him. It grew and became his brother. Run, cried the brother. Run with all your strength. I'll watch the flock. Why? An old man, a sage. He wants to meet all eight of the sons of Jesse, and he has seen all but you. But why? Run. So David ran. He stopped long enough to get his breath. Then, sweat pouring down his sunburned cheeks, his red face matching his red curly hair, he walked into his father's house, his eyes recording everything in sight. The youngest son of Jesse stood there, tall and strong, but more in the eyes of the curious old gentleman than anyone else in the room. Kith and Ken cannot always tell when a man is grown, even when looking straight at him. The elderly man saw, and something more he saw, in a way he himself did not understand. The old man knew what God knew. God had taken a house-to-house -house survey of the whole kingdom in search of someone very special. As a result of this survey, the Lord God Almighty had found that this leather-lunged troubadour loved his Lord with a purer heart than anyone else on all the sacred soil of Israel. Kneel, said the bearded one with the long gray hair. Almost regally, for one who had never been in that particular position, David knelt and then felt oil pouring down on his head. Somewhere in one of the closets of his mind labeled childhood information, he found a thought. This is what men do to designate royalty. Samuel is making me a... What? The Hebrew words were unmistakable. Even children knew them. Behold the Lord's anointed. Quite a day for that young man, wouldn't you say? Then do you find it strange that this remarkable event led the young man not to the throne but to a decade of hellish agony and suffering. On that day, David was enrolled not into the lineage of royalty, but into the school of brokenness. Samuel went home. The sons of Jesse, save one, went forth to war. And the youngest, not yet ripe for war, received a promotion in his father's home. From shepherder, to messenger boy. His new job was to run food and messages to his brothers on the front lines. He did this regularly. On one such visit to the battlefront, he killed another bear in exactly the same way he had the first. This bear, however, was nine feet tall and bore the name Goliath. As a result of this unusual feat, young David found himself a folk hero and eventually he found himself in the palace of a mad king, and in circumstances that were as insane as the king, the young man was to learn many indispensable lessons.